DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's story, The Giant Who Stepped Over the Mountain. Tonight's star, Tyrone Power, in the role of the early American statesman and frontiersman, John Sevier. Out of the shadows of history, I am coming to you. Out of the gray mist that covers the Carolina mountains, there is a story that must be told. And it is my story. Did you know that at one time in the history of the United States, shortly after the Revolution, there was a state in our union known as Franklin? And I, John Sevier, was its governor. North Carolina had given our territory to the federal government, but it wasn't wanted. So we set ourselves up as a state. Then Carolina suddenly realized that it was valuable and wanted it back. They even went so far as to arrest many of our officials for treason. Who can blame them, John? The high mountains of lumber, rich, productive valleys. This may be a wilderness now, but they know that it could bring gold into the Carolina treasury. We've got to stop them. How? How? Force against force. And I suppose you think that I, as governor, must put that force to work? Why not? We've got our own militia, and every man jack burning to fight for our rights. Guns, bullets. No, Standish, I'll not add bloodshed to injustice. To use force would mean one thing to the outside world, that the new United States are not united. No, there must be another way. What other way is there? Well, I, I have no answer to that yet. But we'll do nothing now. We'll just wait for the state of Franklin to be recognized. <laughs> weeks. Months went by. I applied again to the federal government for statehood for Franklin. But a willful group of men in North Carolina were making other plans for our state to be. If something isn't done about it right now, Sevier will have his state in another month. We both know that, Mr. Baring, so it's obvious that something must be done. Sevier is the type of man who will not use force, correct? Of course he won't. Time and again we've goaded him on. One arrest after another. Land taken away from settlers. And yet, with all this... Nothing happens. Very well, then. It must be done another way. We must not lose that territory. I have plans for it. Big plans. You'd better get it first. <laughs> I intend to. One moment. Uh, someday, Mr. Baring, you may learn there's more than one way to solve a problem. Oh, Trent. Hi, Mr. Tipton. Come in. Uh, come in, Mr. Trent. Sit down. Hi, sir. What is this? Uh, this is uh, Mr. Trent, Mr. Baring. Howdy, Mr. Baring. Mr. Trent is a common man. Uh, one of the people, so to speak. Mr. Trent is also a uh, persuasive man. Especially if he can be made to feel that he has been wrong. That's right, sir. I always say there's nothing... Uh, Mr. Like... Trent has friends, uh, many friends who are willing to do a job for a price anywhere. Say, in the state of Franklin. Now, it just so happens that... Uh, Mr. Trent does not like John Sevier. Eh, hey, Mr. Trent? Are you insane, Tipton? Do you realize that... No, Mr. Baring, I am not planning to kill John Sevier. Let's be more subtle. Since we can't make Sevier use force, maybe we can make the people of Franklin use it. But how are you going to... Mr. Trent here and his men will be sent to Franklin as farmers, settlers. They will circulate among the people... Talk to them. Arouse their anger. Not against Sevier. Against the men who are his enemies. They will tell them that uh, what they must do is fight. Fight for Sevier. Do you understand? For Sevier. I see. Provoke an uprising. <laughs> Which is all we need. Uh, now then, Mr. Trent, uh, two weeks from today, you'll meet us again. I'll have a number of men with me, and together we'll carry on from there. Where do we meet, sir? Uh, there's a road that leads east from John Sevier's house. Two miles beyond his house is a fork. We'll be just beyond the north fork of the road. Do you have that? Beyond the north fork. Aye, sir. In two weeks. That should give you time enough to get things started. Remember, not one word against Sevier. 
but give the people of Franklin something to talk about. That's right. And I, for one, don't want to stand by any longer. Sure, John Sevilla tells us to wait, but how long can that go on? Never seen you around here before, mister. Who might you be? Name is Trent. I got a place near Lone Valley. Birdiest place in the state. <laughs> how can you call it a state? When That's it... what I mean. Now you take that place of mine. <coughs> that was taken away from me. Well, it's taken away. Oh, I tell you, when I saw them put out my wife and my kids, all because this territory ain't recognized... I say, what did we fight for against the Redcoats? Yeah, what did we But it ain't for myself I care about. It's him. John Sevier. Precisely yeah, right, man. But one man alone. Alone against all of them. What I'm afraid of is that they'll come into Franklin someday and, well, who knows what'll happen to Sevier. Well, they better not lay a hand on John Sevier. Sooner or later they will. Mark you. Sooner or later. I tell you, when the time comes, we'll fight for John Sevier. Well, Mr. Trent, how did it go? Ripe and ready, Mr. Tipton. Two weeks now, and they're spoiling. And what we're going to do tonight ought to finish it. Uh, here, take a mask. We'll join the others. <laughs> This is Sevier's house. Oh We're going to force our way inside. Uh, Destroy uh, whatever you don't want. But hands off Sevier, do you understand? Hands off Sevier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Dismount. Put on your masks. Come on. Come on. Uh, thank you. All right. Take down the door. What's going on here? Stop. Stop, I say. There he is. Grab him, men. Ah, oh, Mr. Sevier. Who are you? What are you doing here? Someday you'll know who I am, but this is not the time. For the present, shall we say, uh, I'm a patriot. What kind of patriot wears a mask? Mr. Sevier, I have only one thing to say to you. Let this stand as a warning and a lesson. We don't intend to put up with any more of your treason against the sovereign state oh, of... Oh, so that's it. North Carolina. Why, I'll... Hold him! Hold him. You listen, Mr. Sevier, and listen well. Get out of this territory. And if I refuse, what these men are doing tonight is nothing to what may happen. I shall stay here until Franklin is recognized as a state. If you think that men who refuse to show their faces can intimidate and frighten... Look them, around, Joe. Not a pretty sight, is it? The work of cowards never is. Why, you... I... I apologize for that, Mr. Sevier. I lost my temper. But you are going to lose a state. They left the house, disappeared into the shadows. I stood in the middle of the room, staring at the ruins. There was one thing I couldn't understand. Why, why hadn't these men killed me? Why had I been left alive? I walked slowly around the room trying to solve the puzzle. When Standish came the next morning... I told you this would happen someday, but you wouldn't listen. But why didn't they kill me, Standish? Those men were masked. There was no way to identify them. I couldn't risk killing you. Why not? Why not? They came here, destroyed my property. And if you don't think that that's not going to bring about some action, you're wrong. At this very minute, men are gathering all over the state. They're up in arms. They're ready oh, to... Wait a minute, Standish. That's exactly what they wanted to happen. That's their game. Provoke an uprising. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They counted on the people rising in your defense. Open rebellion against North Carolina. And they can march in and take over. Yes. That's playing right into their hands. And it's a lost cause if that happens. We'll never have a state. Come, we'll get our horses and be off. There are hotheads here foolish enough to lead a mob right into Carolina. 
If that happens, we'll not only lose our state, but our necks as well. We'll never catch them, John. They're marching. We're on horseback. We'll... If we do catch them, you think you'll stop them? We can try. They were ready for this, John. Come on. We're wasting time. We rode on. We skirted a ridge and with a wild, headlong plunge down a steep slope, splashed across a stream. It was at the end of the day when entering a long valley... I saw my people marching in the shadows of the twilight. My heart sank. It was like a procession of doom, of lost souls. As we drew closer, those in the rear set up a cry. It's John Sevier! John Sevier, come to lead us! I see you have rifles, gentlemen. Yes, we have. And I suppose you'll use them. I will use them when you lead us. Suppose I don't. What would you do if I refused to lead you over the border into Carolina? But you will lead us. You're our governor. No. No, I will not lead you. What? And furthermore, if you take one step over the border, then you no longer have a governor. It will be the end for all of us. But what they did to you yes. is done. I plead with you to bear with me. I ask for patience. We have had that. And now you'd bring about war. War between ourselves and Carolina. If need be, yes. Yes, war. Is that your last word? Aye. Aye. So be it. Yet there is one last question I'd like to ask. You there, Will Miller. Aye. You were at Saratoga, Valley Forge, Yorktown. And what did you gain there? Well, answer me. My freedom, John Sevier, and I don't propose to lose it. I don't aim to let troops from another state step in here and make arrests, seize property. Not while I have a shred of freedom, at least. I see. But now you would mistake license for freedom. You would break out into violence, in, into war. It is not the right of a citizen to make his own laws, to take the law into his own hands. Wrong has been done to us, I'll admit, but only to provoke us. To make any outburst of ours the foundation for new ways to oppress and destroy us. I beg you not to forget that we have a legal basis for statehood. This territory was given up by North Carolina. But they want it back again. Don't forget that either. Where's our recognition? Give me time. That's all I ask for. Time. But start trouble now. Cross that border and you'll bring the Carolina militia out in force and you will be crushed. The state of Franklin will collapse. We've come this far. We can't turn back. I leave it to you to decide. It will be on your conscience. Come on, Standish. Wait, John. What is it, Will Miller? If we turn back, what then? What then? I have nothing to offer except faith and patience. And after that? God willing, eventually we'll gain for ourselves and for those who come after us the right to live as free men in a future of our own design. Is it worth it? I follow John Sevier. Who comes with me? I'm with you. Me too. Let's go home. Let's go home. Let's go home. All right, back with John. DuPont play continues starring Tyrone Power as John Sevier, governor of Franklin, the lost state. Sevier is telling us of events that took place when it was struggling for recognition. More months passed, and my pleas to Congress fell on deaf ears. I confess there were times when I found it hard to restrain a desire to lead our fierce, eager patriots in open warfare to establish our sovereignty as a state. However, 
One day, an invitation arrived, asking me to come to North Carolina to discuss our claim. I was warned not to go, but I had to take the chance. Uh, Mr. Sevier, we can get out to business. Uh, I am authorized by certain uh, gentlemen here to carry on these negotiations. Sir, what is it worth to you to give up this idea of statehood for Franklin? What is it worth to me? I'm afraid I don't understand. Sevier, North Carolina is debt-ridden. Our finances are topsy-turvy, unsure. Taxes will be levied, heavy taxes, unless we find a way to pay off our debt. Now, there are those of us who see a way to increase revenue by the acquisition of new territory. Whose revenue? North Carolina's or yours? <laughs> oh, come, come, silly. You're not talking to some of your scrawny mountain goats now. We have heard that Spain has been talking to you. What about? Ideals? <laughs> well, we can offer you money for that territory, too. I'm sure you're not speaking for North Carolina. Uh, shall we say... Uh, for interested parties. Deliver, Franklin, and I promise you there'll be a fortunes for all of us. I'd like to ask one question. Yes? The people in the territory. What about their wishes? What will they think? Uh, immigrants, settlers, mongrels. Think? <laughs> My dear fellow, even if they could, what of it? You hold that territory in the palm of your hand. You've never seen it, have you? <laughs> uh, some time ago. Yes. I thought I recognized that voice. Well, Mr. Tipton, there are roads, farms, there are people. Ignore their rights just like that. Look what you'd gain. What have you to lose? Something I'm rather proud of. Something you wouldn't understand even if I told you. Good day. You refuse? It's a long ride back and I should be starting. Goodbye. Uh, those are militiamen, Mr. Sevier. We tried an unofficial measure, but we also took steps to notify the government of North Carolina that an outlaw was in our state. I believe you are going to be placed under arrest for treason. Mr. Severe. Mr. Severe. Uh, uh, who's that? My name doesn't matter. Listen to me. Your trial is tomorrow, you know that. Yes. And you know what the verdict will be. You haven't a chance. Who are you? How did you manage to see me? Jailers can be bribed. Now listen, we're sick of all this bickering. We're going to see to it that there will be an end to Carolina's bungling in Franklin pretty soon. There are men here in Carolina working for its recognition. One way or another, it will come. Oh, this is good news. I risked everything to come here. Now then, your friends will be outside the courtroom tomorrow on a prearranged signal... A man will shout. Haven't you done with that man yet? There's a window. It will be to your right. Jump through it. We will take care of the rest. Well, did you hear me? A short time ago, I came here to negotiate. I was betrayed. Now, if I am shot while escaping, it will save the trouble of a verdict. Mr. Severe, I can do no more than ask you to trust me. I can do no more than wonder and hope. I understand the accused desires to act as his own counsel. Correct, Your Honor. Permission granted. What is, what is that noise, Bailiff? What is that? A crowd, Your Honor, gathering outside. See that they maintain order. Proceed, Mr. Sevier. I, I am charged here today with the crime of high treason against the sovereign state of the Union. I plead not guilty. I submit that my actions were and always will be in the interests of our country. I do not submit to... Haven't they finished with that man yet? I, I do not submit to the charges that I... That... Mr. Sevier, proceed. Yes, your honor. I will proceed. He's headed for the window. Stop it. Fetch him. Hey, Mr. Severe. Come this way. Here's a horse. Thank you. It was a chance, but I had to... No time to talk. Are you all right? Yes. Then be off with you. Hurry. They 
set out after me, but I had the advantage of surprise. A superb horse, and we went like the wind. Before long, I was safe. Meanwhile, my followers in Franklin were up in arms over my betrayal. The following day, I came upon them in the Long Valley again. This time, it was different. They were organized under Standish. They were fighting troops. John, we've finished with talking and waiting and deceit. We aim to break away from the Union. From now on, we're our own kingdom. We've the army to hold it and the will to fight for it. And you, John Severe, you'll be our king. That's it, John. We're offering you a kingdom. King. Was this a dream? Or was I mad? Yet as I looked about me, reality sharpened. There stood a mighty host. Behind it, stretching to the sun, the western lands. We could conquer them. Others had had this chance. Alexander, Caesar. But to what base, what, what wasted ends? I knew that power corrupts and that the strong man rules by force, by chains, by fire, and, and finally in the ashes of a people's shattered hopes. This in America? A king in the United States? I spoke out. No! Listen to me. If you had come to me yesterday, said these words to me, I would have led you until death. For I am human, my friends. Human enough to be flattered and, and weak enough to accept what you have offered. But now all that has changed. Yesterday a man came to me. A man who I thought had prepared a trap whom I considered an enemy. But he was a friend. One of our many friends who ask us to have faith, to wait for the recognition that is our right. Promises. Let them all stew. We can be our own masters. Masters of what? Break off a limb from a tree. How long does it survive? No. I have been tempted, but I have thought this out. My friends, there's an idea loose in this world. It's at the crest now, and it will engulf us as it should. It's the idea of union, not separation. We dare not resist such an idea. What shall we do? Become part of it. Try to make yourselves a kingdom here and you'll have a war. You know it. It is true we have no wish to fight without you, John. Very well. Then let us take the road to union, to peace. Let us follow it together. Not I as leader and you as followers, but all of us together. It's the hard road, but the true one. It will take us out of this dark valley into sunlit uplands to a partnership among these great free United States. Come, let us proceed. We're with you, John. You win. No. No, my friends. We all win. Well, that is my story. We disbanded peacefully and in our homes and towns, nurtured our faith in America and whatever future she held for us. And we were rewarded. For though our state of Franklin was lost to history, our territory became another state after all. Tennessee. Yes, that is my story. And now I must take leave of you. It happened a long time ago. So long ago that I've been afraid there would be those among you who would forget. Or, or those who might be lost. Who might be wandering from the road we must all travel. Together. <laughs> Thanks to Tyrone Power and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, The Giant Who Stepped Over the Mountain. And now Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. You sometimes hear it said that the American way of life is the best way because America has more automobiles, more telephones, more bathtubs, more toothbrushes than the rest of the world. And no question, all of those things are good. Beyond any doubt, they contribute to your better living. But is this why the Founding Fathers pledged their lives their fortunes, their sacred honor. No, 
There were no automobiles, no telephones in George Washington's day, no bathtubs, and few toothbrushes. We could give up every comfort and convenience we have, and our American way of life would still be the best pattern for human society that has ever been found. Why? Because these material things are only the results of the American system. It is the system itself that is so precious that millions of men and women from other lands have suffered untold hardship to come here and take out American citizenship. Our form of government is based on the freedom, the dignity, and the independence of the individual man. In this belief, we have put our faith. If a man has freedom, so Americans believe, that is the all-important thing. The other good things will follow, including the comforts and conveniences. Freedom is something few people ever knew until the United States of America came into being. America's source of greatness lies in the belief that government should be the servant, not the master of the individual. This belief holds out more hope for the future than any other. It is precious indeed. Let us cherish and safeguard it against all enemies of freedom. Tonight's Dupont Cavalcade, The Giant Who Stepped Over the Mountain, was written by Russell Hughes, was adapted from a story in the book, General Washington's Son of Israel and Other Forgotten Heroes of History, by the late Charles Spencer Hart, published by Lippincott. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Borries. The program was directed by John Zoller. Mr. Power appeared to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and may currently be seen in the Technicolor production, I'll Never Forget You. This is Cy Harris speaking. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Next, Hollywood theater stars Gary Merrill on NBC. NBC.